guys welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner if you're new here hello and welcome i am taylor i'm a stay-at-home wife and mom and i've been sharing these what's for dinner videos for over three years now and i just do them to motivate myself to cook and also to hopefully share some new recipes with you guys and motivate y'all to cook so if you like these kinds of videos i hope that you will subscribe down below as always any recipes that i mention will be linked down below as well now let's go ahead and get into this week's what's for dinner okay it is friday and tonight night for dinner we are doing nachos this was a request from elijah i think it's like turned into one of his favorite meals and we all actually really really enjoy it so here i've cooked up two pounds of ground beef with some taco seasoning and i will actually freeze one pound of it i love doing that like cooking it when i buy it and then freezing half of it for tacos or something later saves me time and then we've got some canned refried beans. I have yet to make the ones in the crock pot. I really want to make them again. I've got a bag of pinto beans. I just, you know, it's, it has to cook all day. So I just haven't gotten around to it. And then we've got our last bag of the Rico's nacho cheese pulled from the freezer. Going to be going to Sam's Club soon. Getting another can of that because it froze really, really well. I just pull it out in the morning, let it thaw on the counter, and then when it's completely thawed, I stick it in the fridge until we are ready to use it. We've got some pico from Aldi, some plain Greek yogurt instead of sour cream, got some Ortega taco sauce, some diced jalapenos, some olives for myself, some lettuce for me and Elijah, and then we've got these restaurant style chips from Aldi. We also have like the big dipper ones, the scoops. So that is what we're working with. I'm gonna go ahead and make me and the kids plates and then I will show them to you. Saturday night I made a cheesy sausage pasta. I had picked up a pack of the Better Cheddar Smoked Sausages on clearance so I wanted like a different recipe to use them up instead of like eating them on buns. So I started off by slicing them and then cooking them over a medium heat until they were browned. Once they were browned I added in about one tablespoon of minced garlic and I let that cook for about another minute. Then I added in one can of diced tomatoes, two cups of chicken broth, a half a cup of milk, and eight ounces of shell pasta. I forgot to record me doing it, but I also added in some seasoning. I added in some Tony's Creole seasoning and some of the Badia Complete. And then I brought that to a boil over a medium high heat. Once it was boiling, I covered it and reduced the heat to low, and I let that simmer for about 20 minutes until my pasta was cooked. When the pasta was done, I turned off the heat and added in two cups of cheddar cheese. The sauce looks thin, but it thickens as it sits. If it's still too thin for you though, you can mix one tablespoon of water with one tablespoon of cornstarch and then add that to the pasta. I just let it sit for about 10 minutes and it was thickened to my liking. I served this with a side salad and this meal was good, no complaints from anybody, um, but I wouldn't say it was a family favorite. Sunday was Easter and I made a big Easter dinner even though we didn't have family over or anything and I have shared all these recipes before because these are the same recipes I make for Easter and Thanksgiving and Christmas. Anytime like I make a ham and a bunch of sides. We've got deviled eggs, some honey butter carrots. I did these in the instant pot but on the slow cook function and then I made green bean casserole just for Andy and I made some hash brown casserole and a big ham. And I will have any links to these recipes that I can find down below for you guys if you're interested. I want to show me making all of this stuff again because it's the same I always make and it's not really anything special. It is Monday night and tonight for dinner we are going to have some sandwiches with this leftover ham from Easter last night. We've got a whole bunch of it. We'll do some leftover sandwiches tonight and then I will eat some leftovers tomorrow for lunch and then I will freeze the rest of this to use for other dinners like pizza or whatever. Um, I am using my new camera tonight and I don't know how the sound's going to be. I don't know how the angles are going to be. It's smaller than my other camera so I'm trying to work 
with my tripod and figure out what is best. So y'all just bear with me while I try to figure this out. So I'm going to put that ham on these ciabatta sandwich rolls that I bought at Aldi uh, back in January. I just bought these on 50% off and threw them in the freezer and then I pulled them out today and let them thaw out and they are nice and soft. So we're gonna put some ham and some cheese. I've got out some cheddar and some American and then I'm gonna put these on my griddle. I don't know if you can see this, but my griddle is over here. Heating up, I've got it flipped on the like grill grates um, and we're just gonna smash them down and get them hot and then I am also going to make a can of our favorite Progresso hearty tomato soup to go with it. Here are our finished sandwiches. So we basically have ham and cheese paninis on chapata bread and our tomato soup. Here are the kids. And I always get questions about this griddle. It, the plates are reversible and removable. So the other side is flat. And then they have other plates that you can buy for it, like the waffle ones, so it can be a waffle maker. I love this thing. Um, I recommend it to everybody. Um, it's by Cuisin Art. It's the griddler by Cuisin Art. Love it, and it's always linked in my Amazon store. On Tuesday, we are going to be having the TikTok feta pasta, and to go with it, I decided to make some chickens. I've got some chicken breasts here that I marinated in the Aldi version of the Olive Garden dressing. It's the restaurant style Italian, and I just coated the chicken with that and put a lid on it and let it sit in the fridge for a couple of hours. Okay, for the TikTok feta pasta, I start off by adding some grape tomatoes to the bottom of my baking dish, and then I drizzle those with some olive oil, and I add in about a tablespoon and a half of some minced garlic, a tablespoon of this basil paste, and some salt and pepper. Everybody does different seasonings. You just kind of have to do what you like, and I really like it this way. This is my second time making it. Um, the first time I made it for lunch just to see how I would like it and then Andy tried it and said that he liked it so then I decided to try it on the kids for dinner. So once you get that all mixed around I made a hole in the center to put the feta there. This time I am using the block but if you cannot find a block because they're very hard to find right now because everybody loves this pasta um, you can use the crumbles and I prefer to use the like seasoned one. This is the tomato basil feta but you can use plain feta too, it's fine. And I drizzle that with some more olive oil and then this baked on 400 degrees for 45 minutes. While that was baking, I brought some salted water to a boil to cook eight ounces of pasta. I did some shells this time, but you can really use anything that you like. And then in my cast iron pan, I also heated up some olive oil and butter to cook that chicken that had been marinating. Before I cooked the chicken, I actually drained off any of that dressing and then I added some Tony's Creole seasoning and some Buddy Complete to the chicken to give it a little bit more flavor. And I cooked the chicken over a medium heat on both sides until it was cooked through. When the feta and tomatoes came out of the oven, I gave it a really good stir to get that feta nice and like mixed in with everything and those tomatoes like really broken up. 
And then when my pasta was done, I reserved about a cup of the pasta water and then I dumped my pasta in with the feta and tomatoes, gave that a good stir, and then I ended up adding in some of the pasta water. It just kind of helps make everything coat the noodles a little bit better. So I served the feta pasta with that chicken on the side and then a salad for myself and Elijah and Andy and some raw veggies for Lily. And the kids actually ate their chicken mixed in with the pasta and this was a hit. I knew that me and Andy already loved it, but the kids really loved it as well. I will definitely be making this again. It's super easy and if you like feta, I think you'll like the feta pasta. It is so good. Wednesday night, I started off by slicing three lemons. I'm going to be making sheet pan lemon butter shrimp. I arranged the lemons on a sheet pan lined with parchment paper in a flat layer, and then I put one pound of shrimp on top of that. Then I poured on one stick of melted butter and I seasoned it with some Body I Complete seasoning. You could use any seasoning that you want. The original recipe, um, I never made it, but I was inspired by, used a packet of Italian dressing mix. So you could do that. You could do pretty much anything you want, but I really like it with the Badia, Badia. Um, I think it's Badia. Yeah, I think that's right. But that's how we really like it, so that's how I always do it. And then I bake this at 350 for between 10 and 15 minutes. It's really going to be dependent on the size of your shrimp. This night I was using large shrimp. Usually when I use medium shrimp, it takes about 10 minutes. This took closer to 15. While the shrimp was cooking, I made some garlic parmesan orzo. So for that, I just boiled a pot of salted water and cooked up half a box of orzo. When the orzo was done, I drained it and then I added it back to the pot and I added in some butter. This time I added in the Chef Chamois garlic butter along with some garlic powder, some salt and pepper pepper and then I added in Parmesan cheese and some parsley. I served the shrimp on top of the orzo with some of that like lemon and butter juice that was left over on the bottom of the pan. And then I always like to do this with like broccoli or some zucchini. And this night I did do zucchini. This is definitely a family favorite. We pretty much love shrimp in anything. And I have made this recipe a handful of times now and we love it every time. Thursday night was another family favorite. We had Mississippi pot roast. It's been a while since I actually made it as a pot roast. Lately, we've been loving it as like chicken thighs, but we actually did a pot roast again. So most of you probably already know this recipe. We need a roast. I use a chuck roast. I use carrots and potatoes, some au jus, a ranch packet, the pepperoncini peppers, and one stick of butter. So I got my roast in the bottom of my crock pot, and then I sprinkled on half of the ranch and half of the au jus. And then I put on my potatoes and carrots and sprinkled the rest of the au jus and ranch on top of those. And then I added in a couple of the pepperoncini peppers along with some of the juice and my stick of butter that I cut up. And then this just cooked all day on low. And I just eat it as is, just potatoes, carrots, and meat, but the rest of my family prefers to eat it over white rice, so I make my perfect white rice in the Instant Pot, and they all have it over that. It's super delicious, and if you haven't tried it, highly recommend this recipe. It has been a family favorite for quite a while now. 
But that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you got some new ideas of some things to try. If you did, let me know what you plan on trying in the comments down below. I hope that you guys have a great week and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye!